at the moment of human development, where to get from here. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our discussion tonight. What a bit. Good afternoon, everyone. I think we are all becoming familiar to each other, at least by face, if not by name. And this is an opportunity for the students to maybe get back at us with some questions, with some comments uh, following our discussion. As Phil mentioned, today our theme is education and global development. Where to from here? And our panelists, I will introduce in a minute, but they represent diverse interests and professional exploration. So this topic could go in any number of the different directions, depending on the speakers. And I think that's perfect, because education is diverse, and so is open development. So we'll see what happens, <laughs> the chaos factor at work. So first let me introduce our panelists. We have from Chuo University Vice President and Director of the International Center, Dr. Chikako Takeishi. On my left at the end. And from Tamasat, Assistant Professor Dr. Nitant Visa De Suan. It's a little bit easier for me to pronounce here. Uh, from the first secretary from the Embassy of Japan in Thailand, Mr. Koji Tawada. And to my right, Chief Representative from JICA Thailand office, Mr. Shuichi Ikeda. And finally, on the far right, last but certainly not least, Lecturer at Thomasat University in the Faculty of Le Learning Sciences and Education, Dr. Batana Bao. My name is Steve Hessa, and I will be your moderator for the next hour or so. And what I would like to do is sort of this order of activities. First, we will ask, sorry, my arm is too long. We will ask each of the panelists to share some comments. Some of the panelists have PowerPoints that they will share. We are asking the panelists to condense their comments so that we can move a little more quickly. So we will have the individual comments. Then I would like to ask the panelists to each of you comment or offer a question to other panelists. Okay. So if you will listen carefully <laughs> and share with us some of your thoughts or uh, questions on the other panelists. Then we'll open up the, the panel to your questions, your comments, and then we will wrap up and finish this fabulous day that we've had. So let's begin with Dr. Takeshi. If you will share your comments with us, I will give you the computer.
So from the beginning, Jews in education is aimed at internationalization because these 18 attorneys studied abroad. And from the beginning, Jews aspires to nurture graduates equipped with the practical skills enter the global labor market and able to adapt successfully to a wide variety of national and cultural settings based on the university message knowledge interaction today. And uh, knowledge interaction, but this knowledge actually is not just what we acquire in order to work in society. She also aspires to nurture global talents that can contribute to solving problems that are common to all human humankind. Uh, to be global talents, it's important to acquire practical knowledge and language skills, but that's not enough. More important to be global talents, we think we need we call it three Ds, diversity, dialogue, and dignity. Um, it's important, we think, to nurture respect for diversity, and it's important to have ability to engage in continuous dialogue. And all, these are all in order to make the world to be a better place where every person lives his or her life with dignity. Right now, many people are suffering from violence, poverty, discrimination, or all other problems caused by power games or money games. But we feel uh, we are so privileged to be a member of higher education. Higher education attracts good will of people, and higher education is where like-minded people can get together, pass on their knowledge to the, to the future generations. Thank you very much. I give up my position to my Thank you. Thank you very much and uh, good afternoon. Welcome all of you to Pakistan and uh, thank you very much to Professor Narong Jaihan, the Dean of Law Faculty as well. Um, congratulations to both Chuo and Tamasad University for having the official opening of the Collaboration Centre today. Um, I'm glad that I have opportunity to speak on the education and global human development. Where to from here? I assume that here is not only Thomasat University. The word here would be wherever you are. And uh, I would like to uh, emphasize from the beginning of my message that it is not only the role of the educator to be involved in the human development. And it's very important that when we are managing education in the world of globalization, we have to realize and cannot deny what we are facing. Allow me to group the challenges that we all are facing. First thing I think we are facing with the global economic link that we finally have to face with the economic vulnerability. That finally, whatever happens in one economy will affect other economies. Please forgive me, I'm from the economics department. So I have to start from this kind of uh, aspect. As the world is closely connected, economic problems can be spread worldwide. And we cannot deny that it affects our job availability. And that affects our students our young generations to acquire jobs in the job market. Second challenge that we all are facing is the degradation of natural resources and environment. I think global warming, deforestation, natural disasters are taking place more often and more seriously. 
And the policy designs in a number of countries, including international communities and lots of consortiums, are taking account of the sustainability development, of the energy saving, and a lot more. Particularly if you look at the European Union Strategy 2020, you can see that it's obvious that the aspects of environmental conditions is seriously important. The third challenge that I like to raise here is the conflicts and war in all forms. We can hear about the post coup unrest in Egypt in 2013. I think you all have heard of the Venezuela protest in, in uh, 2014, last year. Even students rally against the vice chancellor at Chedapa University in Calcutta, in India, last year. The Kosovo protest, and uh, recently in Brazil, that uh, there is a demonstration in Brazil outside the National uh, Congress building um, for the uh, against of the uh, corruption. So these three challenges that I put here is in fact are in fact are the outcome of the fourth one that I like to emphasize: misinterpretation of moral attitudes and widespread of the acceptable corruption that it becomes serious problems and that down to the heart of the perception towards and the attitudes towards what is right, what is wrong in the society. And I think all of these challenges become the task of the education to drive and guide the correct way for um, human resources development. So are this a failure of education? I'd like to encourage you all to ask. Nelson Mandela stated that education is the most powerful weapon which we can use to change the world. Those who are educated, of course, can change the world positively or negatively. And that's very important. It's a job of teachers. I'm glad that Thomas Sapp just recently established Faculty of Learning Science and Education. And that will be a very important mechanism for all of us to think about education methods. And I think mechanism of delivering knowledge is highly important and should be more important than only the outcome. What is the function of education then? Martin Luther King Jr. said that the function of education is to teach one to think intensively and to think critically. The intelligence plus character that is the goal of the true education. If you follow Buddhism, there are a number of principles that will teach you how to think. Yoniso Manasigara, if you would like to look up in the Google, you will see that there are 10 ways to help you or guide you to develop analytical and skillful thinking. So that is the goal of the education. I would like to propose here, I know that I have very limited time, but I, I think in a few minutes here, um, the proposal that I... Thank you. Right. So it's come, it comes to a very important part that I like to propose that um, um, I think uh, we, we all should achieve the goal of education on the basis of the three tier development. The first tier, of course, individual development. And I think that's why you are here. You would like to develop yourself to master all of your skills so that you finally acquire the right job, the best job you can. So that means the second tier of development will go to the relationship between individuals and a contribution to the work. How you deliver jobs. And that's why if you look at a number of recommendation letters, there are the application forms and a number of boxes that you ask the recommender to think about your resp responsibility, ability to deliver job reliability. Those are actually uh, out of the textbook um, skills. And you see, that's very important. So your GPA is just only one side. 
maybe take into account only about 0.1%. So don't care too much on the GPA. So the individual and contribution to work will be the second tier of development that I would like uh, to encourage all of you to think about the channels and mechanisms to achieve. And third one, individual and relationship of the work towards the development of society. So the three tier development here, I think should be now the universal direction of all universities in terms of education. The skills that we are truly needing at the moment is the art of listening. I think we are trained to speak, we are trained to present whatever you want to present. But the art of listening is very important. And I think that's the key to solve all the conflicts. I would like to introduce to you about the course that Thomasa is seriously and actively uh, invest in the education. That is called TU100. TU is Thomasa University 100. It is a civic education that all first year students have get together and they have to work on the community-based projects. They learn to listen together, they learn to work in a team, as a team, and they finally work to solve, help solve the problem with engagement with the community. They just don't think on their own, but they listen to what the community wants and work as a team to the local people. So all in all, I think the general education finally must be included in the curriculum. And another aspect that must be included in general education is the awareness about the global conditions. So I like to propose the characteristics of the global citizen that we would like to see. At least myself, I'd like to see. Global citizens should have the quality who have concerns of global perspectives, who can provide local answers. And finally, we, should, we must be locally relevant first and then to become globally acceptable. So that is the um, final answer of the, uh, the final task for the university. So the role of university is very important, not only in terms of creating knowledge, but also to dispense, uh, in terms of dispensable knowledge, creation of leaders, and of course, we are through engines of innovation that will help students uh, on skill development. And the global, uh, going global 2014 last year, I'd like to share with you, um, the leaders of education were gathering in Miami, United States, and they were asked, maybe I ask all of you as well, why internationalization is so important? Think about that. There are six choices for you to choose only one, right? The first choice, to access research talent. The second choice, to increase international opportunities for students. Third choice, to understand how other people think and build trust. The fourth choice, to strengthen, strengthen the tie to industry and innovation. The fifth one, to inter, internationalize the curriculum. And the sixth, to bring international perspectives to the classroom. Right. Anyone goes to the first choice, access research talent. Only one. That's you? No, no. No, okay. okay. <laughs> Only one. One, one, one choice. Oh, okay, you're a moderator, you can't vote. <laughs> Except I allow you to do it. Um, nobody? Go for this one. Okay, second, to increase international opportunities for students. Nobody? This is Asian culture. <laughs> Third one, <laughs> understand how other people think and build trust. Ah, there are hands up. Any more? Maybe about six, seven, and you? No. Okay. <laughs> Number four, strengthen the time to industry and innovation. 
self-censor my talking here. So let me quickly move on to the next speaker, um, Mr. Koji Kawada. And uh, I am also close to uh, Chuo University because I have graduated from Chuo University <coughs> about 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, maybe, uh, no, actually, it's very changing the Chuo University. And also, normally uh, we stay in university for four years. For but I spent five years <laughs> because I am very lazy. 
So I could not graduate four years. So I like to give you the message that the most important uh, thing for uh, university life is study. So uh, please study hard. <laughs> Uh, this is uh, my, uh, my This is Prince Akshino. Oh, oh, oh. This is uh, just three years ago. And I'd like to uh, introduce a uh, relationship with Thai and the Japanese. Uh, in Japan. Uh, one is a royal family and uh, imperial family. We are very close to each other. And one is a uh, Prince Akshino came here three years ago. And also, uh, Prince, Crown Prince visited uh, Thailand in 2012. Oh, this is a photo uh, of Prince, Crown Prince, and also uh, a king. Thailand, the 24th. This is three years ago. Also. And I'd like to also introduce the uh, relationship with Thai government and Japanese government. Uh, we have established diplomatic relations in 1887, about 130 years ago. And also, uh, Mr. Shinzo Abe and uh, Prime Minister, please remember these two names, Mr. Abe and Prime uh, These two just met, uh, had summit meeting on uh, last month, February 9th, then discussed together. No main topic was economy, but uh, this is a quote. And we also have a uh, statement about uh, exchange program, exchange with uh, university teacher. So this is a statement, uh, sorry, joint, joint press statement. Both sides welcome acceleration of collaboration between university through student exchange, student exchange. And Academic change, including the establishment of new office. So, Chuo University just uh, have established a new office here. So, uh, we are both available to establish the office here. Okay, so uh, we maybe in these years we try to increase this kind of exchange program by Japanese government and also Thai government and maybe university also and now we have 34 including two university the Japanese university established the office in Thailand so uh, we increase same program for Okay, and, <clears throat> and student exchange program just we started in 19, 1902. First day students from Thailand was dispatched to Japan. This is the first uh, student. And now, uh, around 2,400 students from Thailand went to Japan. And on the other hand, from Japan to Thailand, about 369 students from Japan came to Thailand as exchange students. So I think not only from Thailand to Japan, also from Japan to Thailand, both uh, mutual exchange is very important. So today we have both Tsuyo uh, University student and Tomasato University this, this is very important. And 
and uh, we have some short visit program because the uh, long program is very not so easy to go and study. So now we are trying to have short visit program also by Japanese government and also uh, by university. So today also, uh, so I hope many students join this short visit program first and have uh, interest uh, to go abroad first. And maybe they know about how they think and how they uh, act to have good relations. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Okay, we will move along so that we can have everyone's comments and then take some time for questions. I hope you are thinking about your questions here on the panel or your comments for when we finish up the first round. I think, in fact, just in the first three speakers, we've been given an indication of how global and how wide-ranging people's experiences have been and people's interests, their professional understanding. And also, we have had some specific proposals on where we should be going with our study at universities and with young people worldwide. So I think we have a lot a lot to share, a lot to talk about when we get to questions and comments. Okay, Mr. Shuji Keda will be our next speaker from Japan International Cooperation Agency, or JICA as we know. Uh, education 
uh, sometimes providing the uh, scholarship. But uh, our main, uh, our main uh, uh, way for the, uh, providing our assistance is not for the individual. We are focused on more uh, organization. I mean, the establishing the university, uh, upgrading the level of the university. Uh, because we believe that to, uh, that is from our uh, Japanese experience since uh, 150 years ago. Uh, because uh, uh, individual education is one of the best and important things. However, without uh, some kind of the higher education mechanism, the higher education uh, institute in each country, it is impossible sustainably providing the human resources to the society. And we are afraid that uh, uh, always uh, brain drain. Even though you have many good uh, talents, uh, competent talent, uh, they are going abroad for the uh, st uh, getting start and study. And they might not come back again to your own country. Uh, during those days, the, the 1960s, when we start uh, cooperation with cooperation for talent, uh, that you have you had uh, some university, Cherokee University. I don't. I guess the Tamasa of course, and maybe Tassar. But you don't have a, a, the competent university for in the field of the engineering. Engineering industry. Uh, engineering field is one of the very important fields for industry. And we believe that at that time, Thailand should also uh, strengthen the industry. And uh, without some kind of uh, institution. Uh, you cannot produce uh, talent uh, and produce the industry. And we start the uh, establishing the organization which you can uh, produce uh, the, uh, the capital talent to the labor market. Uh, 1960s, non double te te telecommunication training center was established under the Japanese grant as well as the Japanese corporation. This uh, center uh, King Mong East of Technology Company came out here. Uh, actually, uh, KMTL is now uh, a good university in the field of engineering. And I guess that uh, you, most, all, all of you know, especially the Thai people know about this university name. But uh, uh, maybe most of you doesn't, don't know about this university was established by uh, Japanese corporations. And in 1971, this uh, center became uh, the King of the Institute of Technology Matter. And uh, most important thing, 1975 and 1982, you see uh, this uh, uh, the PowerPoint, the, uh, the KMITL developed a master degree program for the electronic engineering. It was the first master degree course for the, uh, this electrical engineering field in Thailand. And, uh, and also in 1982, Dr. Degree program uh, in electrical engineering course was also started in, in this time here. We believe that not only batch uh, course, uh, we are focusing to strengthen the university who are uh, continuously producing uh, necessary a talent to the society without uh, how can say, uh, train the teaching staff. How can uh, uh, such uh, organization uh, continuously produce staff? Anyway, uh, through our uh, technical cooperation, we are dispatching many Japanese professors here from the Japanese uh, uh, Chinese University, uh, providing the technical transfer to the, his counterpart, uh, since the candidate of teaching staff for the KMIT here. And also uh, sending those teaching staff to Japan uh, to learn again. And uh, continuously, uh, we, uh, technically we conducted technical cooperation for 15 years. And uh, now those, uh, that university have a very good uh, doctorate records. And uh, they don't need, I can say, uh, if, uh, because sometimes, the exchange of the information is necessary, some of the that teaching staff after uh, studying abroad. However, now they have the capacity to train the teaching staff in their university. This is one of the important things. 
And uh, our Jaka also have us, uh, according to this uh, uh, strategy, uh, we are implementing many technical cooperation for the capacity building for the many universities, including Tapasat University. Mainly focus on the engineering side, uh, meaning that the faculty of engineering use was one of our target uh, uh, beneficiary in the, in the past. Chicago University, the Pakistan, and the others. I'd like to introduce another uh, example, uh, success story for JICA. We also uh, supported the Mahidol University to establish ASEAN Institute for the Chemistry Development here in HP. This is not only for the uh, higher education institute, for only for time, no, for the uh, region. Uh, the, under the Drum Technical System and Technical Cooperation, uh, this uh, uh, institute succeeded to start the international one year intensive master degree uh, program for the uh, primary health care. At that time, 1986, this is the first course uh, providing the international master course, master degree for the uh, public uh, 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 private health. And this course now become a very famous course for the expert, or the candidate expert in the field of time, not only time. Uh, even not from uh, developing country, uh, there are many uh, students coming from the developed country, from Europe, and sometimes from Japan. And uh, you can be proud of this course. And we also proud of uh, this course, uh, which we could succeed to establish this kind of course. And, uh, uh, not only in Thailand, we are now also uh, uh, expanding our activity for ASEAN. The, the I'd like to show another example, uh, uh, cooperation with ASEAN University. ASEAN University means, uh, of course, including uh, some of the Thai universities. Since uh, 1998, we started this AUN seed Network project, ASEAN University Network. Uh, Southeast Asia Engineering Education Development Network. Uh, 26 universities are participating from ASEAN. Uh, all of the universities are uh, some kind of regarded as a center of excellence in the field of engineering in each country. And uh, from Japan, 14 leading Japanese supporting universities also participating to support the quality of some of the activities. And uh, from Thailand, Jarong, Tokyo, Maitier, the Grandpa, Kasesa, the Kamasat University has participated. Actually, uh, the, for this CNET project, we have two important parts that uh, we started. Uh, one is to narrow the gap between the uh, level of the, uh, the university in the CLB country and the senior ASEAN country. Uh, this year, the December, uh, you remember that uh, the uh, ASEAN uh, economic community will be uh, realized and uh, more integration can be seen. And, but still, the uh, big gap uh, existing between the CNNP country and another uh, senior uh, ASEAN countries. It is necessary for, for your people to narrow the gap, even including about the level of uh, university. And also, the most important thing is to prevent the, the brain drain. When we started this project, the, we, we are very strained. We think that why many of the people uh, from the ASEAN, uh, ASEAN country are going abroad for the study, post degree or post graduate degree, but sometimes they don't come back. Even though there are many universities, uh, some of the universities existing in ASEAN are very good universities, like Chirag, Noah, Tamasak University, or the Amoresh University. But uh, most of the students, uh, the rich people, want to go abroad to study. And sometimes, they are, if they are very competent talent, uh, the, the university they are graduating, uh, they are studying, uh, doesn't have a uh, set up, and they don't 
and they say, they work better. And uh, that is one of the uh, problems. <coughs> and uh, we saw that. Why don't you have some kind of the very good post degree and some mechanism that people here can stay, study, and get the doctor degree and the uh, master degree and becoming the teacher's in a That is the, the, what the concept. So this project, Uh, actually, uh, almost now we implement 50 years for this project. 1,100 uh, academic uh, teaching staff have, have, have already obtained uh, the teaching, I mean, uh, master degree or doctor degree. Uh, and uh, according to the, our uh, program, like uh, for the post. Uh, for the doctor course, three years course. Like uh, throughout several months, they study in, for example, General University or the Commercial University, and uh, but the students have chance to go to continuously study in Tokyo University or some other university for several months, eight months. The total is three years, and they could get uh, doctor degree. Such kind of arrangement is done. Ah, sorry. Uh, lastly, uh, I'd like to also emphasize another role of the university. University is an important for education, especially higher education. However, university should have more, another uh, role, that is uh, uh, social uh, 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 contribution. Uh, I think that R&D is one of the important things. When you see this graph in Thailand, you are spending only 0.37% uh, for the GDP. This is quite lower than another significant country. For example, in Japan, and, uh, this maybe is 6.25% or something like that. And uh, uh, Korea and China, they're also very higher. Uh, now, uh, your people, the Thailand, have to jump from the middle the income country to the developed country. Without uh, this investment, they cannot jump to the next step. The uh, university have to uh, take more important role for R&D, and uh, we are also uh, strengthening this activity, collaborating with uh, Japanese universities and uh, finding out some of their counterpart university, uh, and we are implementing the science and technology research partnership for sustainable development program uh, for many years. Uh, for example, uh, for this case. Uh, with Mahido University and Osaka University, uh, they are targeting uh, the uh, uh, how can say, uh, development of some of the vaccine for the dengue virus, which is one of the important uh, areas, especially in this region. But uh, even in Japan, in the last, last summer, you remember the uh, student of uh, the Chuo University, even in Tokyo, they are suffering the dengue fever. Now, uh, this kind of how can say, research activity should be accessory, and the uh, university should take more uh, important contribution for this issue. Okay, uh, I don't have enough time. Okay, I uh, jump and I conclude my uh, presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. I'm very sorry you've seen, you have. Uh, great amount of information. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, we have one more speaker today, and as with introductions, this is certainly not last, or definitely last, but certainly not least, uh, lecturer Dr. Ratana Lau, and I've heard that you are one of the newest and youngest lecturers here at Tomsak University. Is that correct? Newest, okay. So you are maybe closer to the students than the rest of us are in terms of awareness and age, and so we look forward to your comments. Thank you. Thank you very much for this question. Actually, I feel I am caught in between two worlds, but much closer to the student's world rather than the professor and all the teachers will ask. This is only my third month in Masaki University. 
And since I was quite young, I became very actively involved in student activities in various forms and various <coughs> occasions. So to come here and sit on the panel of very honorable lecturers, once my teachers, and in front of all the students, is really, really honoring and inspiring. To hear the Thomasa and Shul students spoke earlier was <coughs> impressive and heartwarming. Because once I was like you guys, I was that first year student who wanted to see the world, who wanted to speak up and who wanted to share your information or your understanding. And it, it's a hard road, right? To speak your mind, to communicate it effectively and also to take open questions. So I congratulate all of you for having done that so beautifully. And today my presentation is precisely how I am caught in between these two worlds of students and lectureship and how I see where global education can take all of us, both as learners and as teachers forward. I benefited significantly from going to the Green Lake World College. I'm not sure if you have heard of. It's a movement for the past 50 years, founded by Kurt Hahn in Germany, but the school I went was in Canada, whereby I spent two years of education, studying with 89 countries' representatives. 200 of us were spending 24 hours together, learning, reading, playing, having fun, getting through tough times. And Lester B. Pearson, the former Prime Minister, former Prime Minister of Canada, said, how can you understand each other if you never live together? That two years became the formative understanding of the world for me. But as the couple days that Stanley students are spending here in Thailand, it is different if you haven't come. It is different if you were only in Japan and heard of this very wonderful presentation or this very wonderful event in Tamasa. But you are here. You are living this moment. And that's what matters. And then I, so as a young kid, or even until today, I am a big fan of Hello Kitty. So I go to conferences with very serious looking professors and I'm here holding a pen, a very and I would like to tell you that it is Sario who probably got me through heavy loaded education and heavy loaded seriousness of the world. Because what Japanese culture has told me is it doesn't matter how tough the world gets, we can always have space for fun and space to laugh. And that's what Japanese culture has taught me as an adult. When things get rough, put a sticker on your notebook and it's better. I haven't put one sticker today because it's a really fun day and it's a good day in and of itself. As a, I was a Kamasa student more than 10 years ago. That, um, and to come here is really, really great because as a Kamasa student, I went to Kyushu University as a representative of Thai student to speak at the World Council of Presidents. And that moment, the opportunity that Kamasa students, Kamasa University gave to me was eye-opening. Similar to the opportunities both you and Kamasa are giving to all of you. And I want to take, I want you to take it fun and take it seriously because this doesn't happen every day. And the most important lesson as a young graduate, undergraduate of Kamasa, I was a debater and I was believing in being eloquent. I believed in being expressive. I believed in standing up and speak up. But it was only when I represented Thailand in the Hitachi Young Leader Initiative, hosted in Kuala Lumpur, where Hitachi sponsored, I'm not speaking to present Hitachi, Hitachi sponsored four of us from seven countries to spend a week together to debate, to talk about policies, to meet politicians, to meet prime ministers, and the TVs were all over at my face. So they put us in Mandarin Oriental, they treated us as adults, they wanted us to be leaders. I was pampered, but I lost, and the most important lesson I learned from that conference, and I carry it to me, with me, every day up to then, up to now, is that never, ever be aggressive. When you became a speaker, you, you felt you do what it takes to hold the audience heart. I did all I could to hold the audience heart. Sometimes it's true aggression. Sometimes it's being too far from. Sometimes it's raising your hands, asking questions all the time. But what Japanese culture has taught me, that aggression never ever sustain, and it's not last. The deputies, the very senior, 
senior um, officers of leadership came and patched to my back and said, you could have been the face of Asia for leadership. You lack one thing. You're too aggressive. And even if I went to London, and even if I went to New York, and even if I lived in Hong Kong, with the most aggressive people of the world you can possibly imagine. When you put Chinese together with the speaking English very fast, aggression doesn't go beyond that. I sat there quietly in the back of the class, took notes, listened, observed, and perhaps after 20 hours of listening, I would address one question. I've been asked many, many times by my professors in London and New York if I understood English. <laughs> I went through school with distinction and writing was easy for me, I mean, as an adult. It was hard when I went to Canada. I didn't understand lectures for a year. I went to English classes and I did not take any notes. But as a PhD graduate in New York, I understood exactly what they were saying and not saying. But being quiet in New York was not right. Being quiet in New York was almost an equivalent of being stupid. You have to be aggressive to get through life. But it's not right. It's not sustained. I would survive if I was in New York. But because we are Asian, I'm not saying about this being regionalistic or nationalistic, but what my Japanese friend back then told me, it is peace that matters. It is humility that matters. It is not your aggression or your confidence to take up that microphone. It is how much you give yourself time to study, to understand, to learn about the world. So that part I said is me as student. When I became lecturer, I have been a visiting scholar to the University of London, that is my alma mater. I went to Columbia as a lecturer and I went, I spent a year in Hong Kong. As a teacher, I hated the sentence when anyone said, students are stupid. We hear that a lot in Thailand, that students, in Thai students are stupid. Thai students don't read enough. Asian students are submissive. I raised my hand as a lecturer in this place and I said, which student did you meet? If all of that had met you guys today, the hypothesis that students are stupid is no longer whole. <coughs> because despite the fact that English is not your first language, you held the microphone and you spoke with grace. And even if some of the questions were far beyond what you had prepared, I know you could have answered if it was asked in your first language. I know you could have responded that gracefully if it was in Japanese or in Thai. Take this as a lesson. Don't take it as a humiliation. Take this to go forward. And when I meet policy makers, I always tell them, when they say students are stupid, it's because they don't meet the right students. But as a recommendation to where we go from here, it is how the world bridging the gaps between one third. I have this hypothesis that is one third of everything. You guys are the top one third. The one third that want to see the world and can see the world, have seen the world. You guys are the one third that travel across boundaries. And there's another one third who are sleeping in your classes, who don't really, don't really care what's going on, don't really mind what's happening. And there's another one third that want to see the world but have never ever left their village because of the lack of opportunities. The marginalized one third at the bottom, they wear the socks that have five holes to school but they want to go to school anyway. So where do we go from here as a global education? How do we let you want the, to excel? How do we wake up the one third that is sleeping? And how do we bridge the gaps of the one third that perhaps one day they can leave their village and know what your university is? So this is almost all as if a storytelling of my trajectory as a student and as a teacher and I hope it is useful for all of you to where we go from here. So thank you very much. Okay, well, in fact, maybe that brings us full circle through professors and 
aid professionals and government officials back to the students and back to education. And I asked the panelists to maybe have a comment or a question, but I think maybe we'll dispense with that part, if that's okay, and move right to questions from you in the audience. Because I think we've covered a great amount of material here and some really insightful, thoughtful ideas and observations and proposals, suggestions. So let me open it up to the members of the audience. What questions do you have? What comments do you have? And please feel free to, to argue but not be aggressive. <laughs> okay, we already have a question in the back. Speaking of presentations, I am Takayoshi. I'm a member of the Chiu University. Maybe we'll give you a microphone. Okay. Thank you for presentation. I am a student uh, and an analyst of the Chiu University. So let me ask a question. So through the, this presentation, I think uh, the system is a good. Would you like to direct your question to one person or to the entire panel? Entire per entire person. Okay. <laughs> I think the uh, the system is study abroad or scholarship system is good, but in case of Japan, it is still a big gap between student and system. I am a low faculty student. So I think almost all students have an interest about study abroad or internationalization or globalization. But uh, almost half students uh, go to a study abroad or uh, attend a classroom or etc. Et Why? Because uh, I think the job hunting problem or uh, in my faculty is low, low faculty. So low faculty. <coughs> We somebody we take a of uh, bar exams or other so as I said, uh, a number of Japanese students uh, feel uh, they don't speak English well. So they reluctant to go to the study abroad. So they are still big gap between system. The system is wonderful, but the student is um no <laughs> yeah. So I think uh, there are still big gap between the system and student. So uh, do you have any opinion for the solution in this situation? Maybe if we could get two two members of the panel to comment, would anybody like to since maybe probably the Japanese members have a clear idea of what's happening in Japan. So maybe uh Kesan and Takeshi. Uh, thank you for the question. I'm glad to hear that many students uh, actually want to go to study abroad because we want the number of students who uh, will actually study abroad for a certain amount of period, not just for a short visit, but for uh, at least a semester. Uh, this number should be about 1,000, we, we are hoping. And we think that there must be some barriers uh, that stop students who would like to study abroad. And we are going to conduct a survey of the students, what's stopping them. And actually it's going to have a survey uh, uh, the early next year, I, I'm hoping we're uh, making the survey. And uh, the Japanese uh, government is talking about inward-looking uh, young students uh, 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 that uh, they think that the mental sets are so domestic that they don't go to uh, study abroad. That's government things. But uh, there are uh, international survey that uh, um, proved that it's not the mentality, but it's financial barriers or a job hunting opportunities and uh, these uh, physical 
or real obstacles that are stopping the students. So maybe uh, after conducting this survey within two university, we can improve the system to fit the students' needs. I also have a similar impression, uh, the professor mentioned that too. Actually, my uh, impression for the research of Japanese students, I met university students in Japan, uh, not so aggressive and anxious for the study abroad. That, that fact, for example, for our case, Jacob, we have some program for the uh, Japan Overseas Cooperative Volunteer, young volunteer, and we are providing the opportunity to young, uh, young people, young generation, to work uh, as a volunteer in the developing country. But these days, it's rather difficult to get the uh, uh, applicant for the summit and uh, many posts. The, compared to the previous 1980s and 1970s, when we started our uh, OTA, uh, the, the other more younger generation are more uh, how can say, active and uh, aggressive to to get a chance for the working abroad. But these days, I don't uh, feel such kind of pressure from the present uh, research. Uh, Thank you. Um, can I add uh, some uh, experience that Tanasan um, University has also faced with a similar uh, problem that our system is actually uh, well designed. I'm sure that all universities in every country uh, have the aim of um, encouraging students to go abroad, especially nowadays. Because going abroad is not only to have education, but you, are just, you, you can go there to see the world, and uh, you learn new culture, you live with people. So living and learning together will help you broaden your views, and of course, that will benefit your career opportunities. Um, at Tamasad, we see that there are two things that uh, we must um, take it uh, seriously. First is the communication, internal communication between our own staff and students. And I found that uh, even though we uh, have increasing number of outgoing exchange students, we still have very little proportion from the Thai program um, <coughs> students. Um, of course, in the national program, students are more active in uh, going abroad because originally they come because they want to go on exchange. So we found that students from science technology department or uh, some uh, socio uh, uh, sociology uh, or the uh, social work programs where they don't have the international programs, um, they would like to go, but it seems that they get less access to information so that is our own internal administration problem that I think all universities must take care of it seriously. Um, so what we do is to promote uh, international programs, uh, international exchange, sorry, through the uh, variety of channels. One is the exchange fair, of course, to let them know what is available for them. That is, that's the first one. And the second one, I think it's, it's also very important, that is to prepare our own students' um, ability and capacity to go. Language profi proficiency is one problem, of course. Um, English um, uh, uh, is one uh, that we may think that all students uh, can, can speak English at least. They can pass TOEFL scores or IELTS uh, at the minimum, as the minimum requirements. But a number of them do not know that they need to take some time to get the required or minimum score as uh, required by our partner universities. Because partner universities may require different levels of language um, scores. Um, the first year student should be uh, informed sooner what level of language they need to pass. And then they have the certificate of the language for um, applying uh, for the exchange program, which is normally done in the second year, so that they can take the whole third year of work. So that is a kind of the preparation of our students. 
for non-English speaking countries. What we do is to promote through a number of departments. I think it's quite fortunate for Thomasel that we have Faculty of Liberal Arts which offers a variety of subjects courses. We have about 40 departments in the Faculty of Liberal Arts uh, where students can learn Japanese, Portuguese, Russian, Vietnamese, Indonesian, Bahasa, variety of subjects. So once the uh, door opens to uh, non-English speaking countries, they can jump into that with their ability to, to communicate with that local languages. In terms of Japan, I'd like to share with you, and I'm very pleased that at the moment, the greatest number of students going abroad select Japan. Even though not all of them can speak Japanese. But we try to encourage them that when they go there to Japan, they can select courses in Japanese or even Japanese languages. Fundamental Japanese languages, living with Japanese families, or living, playing with their Japanese friends. So this is a kind of the uh, preparation of our own students abroad. So your um, view, I think it's not the question, but I think it's very important comments, uh, and that is a greatest concern to uh, bridge the gap, and that will make uh, the international exchange become more effective. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you from, for all the comments. There are a couple more questions. Let's, um, if I can ask you, we're going over time, so if you can make your questions as specific and brief as possible, okay? I want to know. Boom. Okay. <laughs> so. Sakura Science Program. 
and Sakura Science Program. This is also a uh, short visit program, about seven or eight days. And this is uh, Chuo University can apply to JST, Japan Science and Technology, after when they just established a new program to invite the student from Asia. So if Chuo University can make a program for Thai, especially Tamasaki University, to invite Chuo University or other institutions nearby Chuo University for science. This is an example of the Great, thank you very much. In fact, money always seems to be a big issue. <laughs> okay, yes. Um, we would like to ask a question back. Oh, okay. I think um, going abroad is always a good option, but at the same time, there are more opportunities in the short term that universities can promote for student activities. Like the law faculty has moon court. I think this one of them. Business faculty has um, the business moon crop. So I think these kind of these kind of activities are short term, much more reasonable. Uh, but currently we don't. It's very currently in the we don't have enough support for more students to go because the current way is that the only one not number one person gets to pick we pick, and what about the two hundred students left? Yeah. So I think like to create an international environment back into the classroom is not to always pick that one person. Um, you all, I think it's, you just need that good of group and teamwork. And when that three, when three people go, when five people go, they come back and they tell their friends. That is a great opportunity. There are 50 more ones to go. You create the desire and go back to the first question of the lack of language proficiency. You already said the system is good and the problem is the lack of language proficiency. If the problem is within you, you don't ask back for us to do. You do it yourself, right? There are more technologies, there are more apps, there are different programs that you can learn. So now you already say that it's the good system. I would not really agree of it, but you already said the system is good enough. So now it's up to you, I think, for the students to take part in that too. Thank you very much. There were a couple more questions. Um, if we can just maybe take two more questions. <laughs> three more questions? Okay, I see three hands up. Um, let's take those three questions. I, how are Phil? Phil? Excuse me. <laughs> Why don't we go to your question, another question here, another question over there. I understand that you talk about the communication. Uh -huh. So I would like to ask you how how do you encourage the student to think out of the box so that they would have the idea to do what they want and also to crack the system that we all face the problem. People always ask me how to think of the box. My answer is I never even know where the box exists. <laughs> if you, maybe this is an arrogant answer, but growing up, my parents never told me this is what the right way to do. Um, I had teachers who told me this is right or wrong, but I always go for the wrong one. <laughs> so sometimes it's, it's a built-in inert, you know, um, rebellion at the minimum micro level that perhaps will push you to question, you go to class, don't listen, listen, listen to what your professor says, but don't believe it. <laughs> I'm not telling you to be that aggressive and 12 years ago. I'm telling you to have an inquisitive mind, to raise your hand, and to, sometimes you are asked questions, don't tell them it's a good question, because some questions are really bad. Tell them it's a bad question to be asked. You know, I was in one job interview and you know what I was asked? If I had read the following books, and what do I think of these 30 books? <laughs> right? You would laugh, right? If anyone with the right mind would actually think that question was inappropriate, what do I do? I was in Thailand. I, am, I, I was in the seniority level that I can't actually say, Excuse me, did you really ask that question? I 
read the Japanese way. I let the question be asked. I look at the person who asked, and I say next. So you ask me how to make the student think. Begin with yourself. Ask even whether that question was legitimate. And sometimes, if for yourself, if you have any questions, spend some time to think about it. What questions you are asking. If it's in the word, maybe keep it at the back. But never stop asking questions. The questions can be asked for yourself. You can write that on the notebooks. I have like 200 questions, but on 199, I don't need to be asked. That kind of training, train your mind to always be awake, right? Then you don't go to class and fall asleep. Because even if you go for a boring lectures, which are a lot, it's still entertaining. You can start drawing cartoons of your lectures and, you know, and, and tell yourself why that lecture doesn't work. Then you have a better idea of what should work. So this is a little thing you can practice. Great, thank you. Okay, we have some subversion growing here for uh, students to take over the classroom. I'm very, very happy to hear that. Please thank go ahead. Yeah, but I, I just want to ask, it's not about an academic question. I just want to ask a general question direct to the Dr. Raptanan. That I just want to know that how you have, how you give the resolutions to break through the rough situations that you face under the pressures of working or studying or do something hard that may be useful for a student that any other didn't get the chance like me today. And I just want to ask when some student get better in everything in her life but she didn't get yeah. This is my notebook. Hello Kitty is almost a simplifier of bad days I went through. This is March. I'm telling you today, as an individual to another living individual, not as a lecturer or not as a senior, everyone has bad days. Some of us have bad days every day. I look back into March and I smile at myself and I'm glad for having survived almost 20 bad days of the 21 days that had happened. I have statistics because every bad day I put one sneaker on and look at my sneaker notebooks. This is not, this is for fun, right? So every time I go to a meeting and it's really, really boring, I start creating my own little zoo. And I'm just like, I used to be so aggressive. You have no idea. I used to raise my hand and make speakers cry because they were giving me bad lectures. <laughs> On the first day of a Tamasa student, I sat through a lecture where the lecturer called us garbage, mm -hmm. stupid, empty-headed, nonsense. <laughs> no, luckily, he was not a full time. <laughs> I, I listened for two hours. You know, you so excited getting your Thomas up, and I was one of you sitting and being called stupid. I took notes for like three pages, and I raised my hand at the end, and I said, I have comments, not questions. How could you use September, October 1993 or 1996 as a standard for what we go through today? Right? I raised my hand and looked at in their face, how dare you call yourself? an educator when you condemn us. So my bad day in Tamasa began on day one. <laughs> but I lived three and a half years of amazing memories of this place because every time bad things happen, you take a deep breath. You look around yourself. At least you have next meal to eat. You're not worried about your five broken socks. You're not worried about your parents not having up on the table. I'm not telling you to compare yourself with the weakest, no. I'm telling you to appreciate what you have. And even if what you have is limited, even if it's so little and so few, do what do it with what you have. Don't compare yourself to others. Because if you start comparing bad days, I have, I'm sure we can go on for seven months of our bad days. And then we forgot to live for seven months. Yeah? 
up. So I'm thankful that you stand up because believe me, all of us in this room goes through times that we want to cry. And I'm glad I have to shed tears for the past 20 days. It wasn't easy, but I'm glad that I'm here today and telling you as a, you know, one person to you that just get on in life. Buy more stickers and you know. <laughs> Thank you very much. We have one more, one more question, gentlemen. Back. Hi. My question, uh, my comment is not a question. I want to suggest uh, one thing. That is the study session with Professor University and Joe University. So, because I think the big problem is the, a big problem of the uh, our uh, exchange program. That is the, the student cannot imagine how society abroad is good life. Because uh, before coming to Thailand, I'm now as an exchange. Uh, I'm now exchange student from Chuo to Kansai. So before coming to Thailand, I cannot imagine anymore what finds. And I thought it might be difficult and might be impossible to to be success as uh, study abroad. So at that time I thought that if there are a lot of chances to communicate with the person who had the experience both of study abroad. So I want to suggest and so to make a conference or some small if not just small conference with the student and uh, who, who are going to study abroad and have a extent uh, have a experience. So um, so at the first step I think I suggest that we should start uh, during the concert and the tour. So uh, this is my suggestion and uh, as a concrete and uh, we will uh, contact uh, with uh, Skype. So, so this is a good tool because uh, uh, we don't have uh, uh, we don't have to go abroad. To, yeah. And uh, this is enough to uh, feel the diversity. So because the diversity is very important for uh, the 21st century, as uh, as Schumpeter said, the uh, 21st century is a uh, uh, century of uh, innovation. So for innovation is uh, for innovation, the diversity is most important. I think. So. As from the aspect of diversity, it is very important to communicate with foreign people. So uh, let's begin uh, from today. This is my suggestion. I think that's a perfect way to end this discussion today. Let's begin from today. And I think there have been so many positive comments and many concerns, but I think all of us here can agree that at least this kind of dialogue, this kind of sharing, as you mentioned, is so important, both for the institutions and for the students. But we were talking about the global level. And if we are going to build that trust, that um, um, not, that you mentioned before, the trust and the awareness that builds internationalization, this is where it begins in rooms like this. So I'd like to thank the panelists very much today for your help, for your comments and your wisdom. And I hope that we all have a chance to gather again in a, a room again someday soon. Before we finish today, Professor Omura will offer some comments. But before that, I'd just like to ask you to give a big hand to the panelists. Sure, you're on.
observations, comments, questions.
the honorable guests, my colleagues, and my dear students. Thank you very much for your attention and your participation today. Especially, I appreciate uh, the stimulating presentations and uh, uh, Q&A sessions uh, by outstanding teachers and uh, guests, honorable guests. And we, had, uh, we have had a fruitful exchange of opinions. So, Opoka. <laughs> Thank you very much. Finally, the faculty of Guatemala University would like to present the gifts for our discussions and moderator. So let me welcome to the floor Dean Narota of the faculty of Guatemala University. So we begin from the Thank you very much. 